Today we're going to look at a technique that's very common in the organic chemistry synthetic lab, but undergraduates in organic chemistry rarely get to see, and that is the separation of water during a chemical reaction. The most common one is when you take uh, a diol and you make an acetal with it and an aldehyde or a ketone to protect that aldehyde or ketone. Okay, we don't we talk about this all the time in the lecture, but we never see this actually done in the lab. So I thought that I would demonstrate that today. But what, what I'm going to do is to uh, take some uh, paratolualdehyde, which is a liquid, okay, and I'm going to mix it with some ethylene glycol. Now, ethylene glycol is 1,2-ethane diol. It's the same stuff that you put in your radiator. You go to AutoZone, you buy a, a quart of the stuff, and then it tells you to dilute it one-to-one -one with water. Well, that's ethylene glycol. And ethylene glycol forms a nice acetal with aldehydes, with my 4-methylbenzaldehyde here. I uh, took the liberty uh, beforehand to measure out 20 grams of paratolualdehyde. And you can't see it from where you are, but there is a uh, layer of paratolualdehyde here on top. And on the bottom is a layer of ethylene glycol. You can see they're not very soluble in one another. You can tell when you shake this up that it forms a kind of a mayonnaise affair here. Eventually that will all separate out again. So what I'm going to do is to then add a, uh, a little bit of toluene. And just as a word of caution, I want to point out that when you handle organic molecules, you put on your, your safety glasses and you, in your safety gloves. And that's what I'm doing right now. Okay, so here we go. Let's measure out uh, some toluene here. I don't know, what would be good? About 75 mils, I'm guessing here. Let's see, about 75. That looks pretty good. Now, if you go to the CRC handbook and you look up the specifications for toluene and water under uh, azeotropes, these binary azeotropes, uh, there's a whole list of them in the CRC handbook, you'll see that toluene, which ordinarily boils at 110 degrees, and water, which of course boils at 100, when mixed with toluene will in fact form what we call an azeotrope, a low boiling azeotrope in this case, that boils at 85 degrees centigrade. So you'll see the uh, toluene and the water boil below the boiling point of either one of these uh, molecules. We'll just add the toluene in there and you'll see the reason why when we look at the Dean Stark trap and the water separation technique. Okay, so I've got my toluene in there and once again the ethylene glycol is not going to be soluble in the toluene. I'm going to put my, carefully put my uh, stirring bar in there, and then I'm going to add the catalyst, the paratoluene sulfonic acid. The reaction will not go without the paratoluene sulfonic acid. So I'm going to add a little bit of that in here, uh, a few milligrams, that's about it. Okay. Paratoluene sulfonic acid is used because it has quite a high solubility even though it's like sulfuric acid, it has a high solubility in organic solvents. All right, so we can mix that up. And now we're going to assemble the apparatus. Okay. We're going to need to stir this vigorously. And I'm going to heat it up with a heating mantle. And that goes right under here. Okay. Okay, and I'll plug this into a variac. There we go. And then I'm going to use what we call a Dean Stark trap. In fact, this is what the whole thing's all about. This Dean Stark trap is a very simple affair. You can see it's got a graduated test tube affair over here, which ends in a stopcock. Here I'm going to put this into the reaction vessel. We've got a, a joint like that. And you'll see what happens when uh, this starts to heat up. 
Okay. Let's get that nice and tight there. Okay. And let's start this. Okay. Now, let, just let me explain what's going to uh, take place here. I'm going to be heating up the toluene, and when the acetylation occurs between the ethylene glycol and the 4-methyl benzaldehyde, we give off a molecule of water. Now the water and the toluene are going to form an azeotrope, which is going to boil below uh, the boiling point of either the pure toluene or that of water, as I said before. In fact, I checked the boiling points of the paratolualdehyde, and the paratolualdehyde boils at about 200. Okay, about, that's quite high. And the ethylene glycol, even for such a small molecule, boils at about the same temperature, almost 200 degrees. So it, the boiling point of these two materials is well below the boiling point of the azeotrope. Now what should happen then as this heats up, and let's just crank this up here to get this started. Okay. As I heat up the toluene, the reaction occurs. We know that when we write a balanced equation for this, reaction, we get water as a byproduct. The water and the toluene are going to distill over up into the condenser over here. Okay, I'm going to start that now. Okay. Okay. And it's going to condense. Now one thing about this azeotrope that's kind of cute is that it is it acts almost as though it's a pure material that's boiling and it's homogeneous. But as soon as it cools down to room temperature again, the toluene and the water, which are mutually immiscible, will in fact separate. And you should be able to see that over here. And since toluene is less dense than water, the water then is going to collect in the test tube down here, and uh, the toluene will be on top. And you'll get a continuous removal of water okay, as the reaction proceeds. And more water is formed up to, to the point where you exhaust all the water in the reaction and it comes off. Now, as I said, I took the liberty of, of uh, weighing out the materials beforehand. I had 20 grams of 4-methylbenzaldehyde, which is about, one, uh, about 0.17 moles. And I decided to add to it about 12 milliliters of ethylene glycol, which uh, is more than... Uh, a one-to-one -one mole ratio. So I got an excess of the ethylene glycol in there relative to the paratolualdehyde. This uh, should ensure that we convert all the 4-methylbenzaldehyde to uh, the acetal. It will take a little while, but you'll see that shortly when the boiling starts, we should be able to see the water separating out. So all we have to do now is just wait. Okay, we are now at the end of the water separation demonstration. If you get up close, you be able to see that there's about, about four and a half milliliters of water in here. We predicted about three and a half, but uh, there might be even a little bit of toluene in here. This side's very cold, relatively speaking, to the uh, tube on this side because, as you can see, there's a dripping here of this toluene up into the uh, up out of the condenser back down into this tube right here and then occasionally you can see a drop of water uh, uh, collecting in there so the demo is effectively done if you look down into the reaction mixture it's uh, it's clear it's not uh, murky like it was when the reaction started so all we have to do then is to allow this to cool down by turning it off and then just leaving it and eventually working up the reaction by getting rid of the toluene and any excess paratoluene sulfonic acid and also the water-soluble ethylene glycol.